you might be wondering how to get the absolute best weapons and armor in Dragon's Dogma 2. Well, you should know that to get the ultimate gear, you will need a lot of Worm Life Crystals, a rare item drop from killing drakes and other draconic creatures in the game. We have a spoiler warning for you here. This video will go over how to get the absolute best weapons, armor, and drake farming locations in the game. If you don't want to know the requirements of how to get these ultimate items, as well as the various drake spawns around the map, this is your warning. There are going to be spoilers mentioned here, particularly later in the video. This is how you get the best items in the game, so this is your warning. So you should know that after you complete the main story of the game, you can enter the game's true ending. It's called the Unmoored World. I won't go into this just yet, but you should know that you need to get here to unlock access to these powerful items. After that point, and also available in New Game Plus, you can speak with the Dragon Forged NPC here on the map to gain access to a whole new array of extremely strong weapons and armor. These are the highest stat items you can get for each vocation, but the thing is, these weapons cost 110 crystals each, and a full armor set is very expensive too. At this same vendor in New Game Plus, you can also upgrade your vocation skills to cost half of their stamina, which is massively powerful for stamina heavy skills like the Mystic Spearhand's Wild Fury. You can also improve a vocation to increase the bonus stat growth that you get from level ups. I've checked the Dragon's Dogma Central Discord, which is an amazing community by the way, and it will be linked in the description. Apparently from their testing, this will affect the permanent level up stats that you gain. This means you can reach the maximum stat cap quicker at around level 200 to 225. It's not a massive deal, but it does mean you can reach the maximum number of stats earlier. Furthermore, you can buy buffs at this vendor to level up faster and even Dragon Forge your maximum upgraded gear to further increase their power and give you a cool visual shimmering effect. So as you can see, there is a lot of things you can do with these crystals and you will need a lot of them. So how do we get them? Well, there's two main ways. One is farming drakes in the game's world, and the second is to defeat bosses in the unmoored world. Drakes are lootable two to four times after defeating them, and in their loot pool is a chance to get five or six crystals per loot. So this means you can get between five to over 20 per kill on a drake depending on your luck. Let's go over each of the drake's spawn locations, how to make them respawn, and some handy tips. The first thing to note is that drakes are weak to ice, so bringing the ice boon on a mage is an ideal choice. High Solemnity is a silent spell for mages, and it is awesome for farming drakes. This move can knock them out of the sky when they start flying and hovering, so it's ideal if you're playing a melee vocation. Bringing a sorcerer with meteor on and a mage with celestial peon is also extremely helpful because the meteor shower does huge damage, meanwhile the mage celestial peon will give you reduced damage taken, increase your speed, and give you near infinite stamina for a short duration. If you would like to, you can hire my mage pawn Daenerys, who is themed after Game of Thrones, with this code on the screen. She is a juiced up mage outfitted with all of the necessary skills to make farming drakes even easier and faster. Drakes have a weak point on their heart when it is glowing, so focus this as much as possible. It will flinch them, stop them casting their spells, and eventually knock them over for a critical strike. Although I haven't had this happen to me, others are reporting that thief pawns with plunder can also steal crystals from drakes, so that's pretty good too. Before we go over the locations, you should know that you can respawn these drakes, but you need to rest for between 7 to 14 days. 14 in-game days, or 2 weeks, seems to be the most consistent for us. Furthermore, resting at an inn after these days has passed, in our experience, helps them respawn even easier. You need the bodies of the drakes to fully decay and disappear. If you're doing this at a campsite nearby their spawn point, I suggest after resting for the necessary days, save your game and return to the main menu. Then load back in, and this seems to help things respawn if you're too close by. But generally, rest around 14 days, ideally at an inn, and then return back to the farming points, and this is how we got the most consistent spawns for us. So let's go over the Drake locations because we know of 13 spawns so far. In Vermund, there is seven. The first spawn is a random chance encounter in Vernsworth, the main city at the main entrance. It's pretty random and starts happening towards the later end of the main story. The second location is just north of the Nameless Village here on the map. The third location is a story encounter in Melv as part of the Mystic Spearhands quest. I haven't seen this reappear a second time, so I think this is a one-off. The fourth is just north of Half Village here on the map. The fifth is just west of the Last Dragon and roams around this area here. 
The sixth is just north of the Last Dragon, east of the Misty Marshes, here on the map. It roams this road, so you might need to run around to find it. These last three are actually pretty easy to farm. They're all close to Harv Village, which has a permanent port crystal to get here easily. So you can rest 14 days at the inn or at a nearby camp, venture out from Harv and farm the first dragon, then go left to the next dragon, and finally north to the third dragon, as they're all quite close together. But there is a seventh dragon here too, it's located in Vermund in the ancient battlegrounds here, it's fighting an ogre, it's quite an iconic one if you haven't seen it before. And then we have Batal, where there are four more locations. The first is just southwest of the checkpoint rest town, here on the map. The next is just south of the Oracle's location, here on the map. The third is all the way to the west of Batal by the river here. And the fourth is in Dragon's Breath Tower, it's the final part of the Mystic Spearhand quest. It's a long, arduous journey to get up here, so it might not be the best one to farm. And next up, we know of two more locations on the Volcanic Island. These drakes seem a little stronger than the other ones, but if you're farming these, you should already be quite powerful. The first is here on the map, it's on the very northwestern point of the island. And the next one is here by the lava area, just outside the main camp. And next we have the Unmoored World. This is pretty spoiler heavy, so you've been warned. When fighting Grigori, the final red dragon boss of the main story, you must use the Godsbane Blade from your inventory while holding onto its heart as it glows. Here you can farm drakes once again, but you also have a limited number of bosses all around the map on these giant red beacons. However, you do have a somewhat limited time frame in this world before you cycle back into New Game Plus. Many are reporting online that Thief Pawns with the Plunder skill are super OP in this area for farming, as they can steal hundreds of extra crystals from these bosses in the unmoored world. So, bring thieves with plunder if you are farming here. You're best spending your time in this area evacuating each major city or camp, and killing the bosses at the giant red circles on the map. There are several of these bosses on each major location around the map. These are massive bosses that each drop up to 75 crystals. This makes this area very good to farm for the crystals, although they do not respawn. So if you want to come here again after completing it all, you need to cycle through the entire main story again. So the regular drakes are also quite nice to farm, because you can respawn them and farm them indefinitely. So there you have it, how to farm drakes, a bunch of handy tips, and every location that we've found so far. Share any extra tips or other drake locations that you've figured out down in the comments below so we can all learn together. And subscribe for more Dragon's Dogma 2 coming your way very soon.